Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will walk you through the tutorial available on the NASA Chandra X-ray Observatory website, chandra.harvard.edu, to create colorized images from raw X-ray data that you can download from their site. So the first thing you need to do is select images that you like and you want to work with, download the raw files from the site, and find out how to do that in the written directions for this project, which you can access from the description of the YouTube video. Once you've downloaded those files and installed the new image manipulation program, you can open them by going to File, Open as Layers, navigate to the folder where you've saved them, select all three layers by holding down the Shift key and clicking, and then click Open. And for now, you can just accept the default values with these little windows that pop up. Just hit Open to open all three layers. Now, you'll get three layers in your image, as you can see over here on the right. And if you look at the center, you'll notice that this looks very dark. Now, the first thing you'll need to do here is go up to Image, select Mode, and then RGB. This changes the entire image to a color image. RGB stands for red, green, blue from grayscale image. This is what will allow you to add color later. The next thing you'll need to do is you might have noticed briefly when it was loading that you could see the other layers flash, but right now each layer is opaque, so the top layer is covering up the other two layers, which you can tell if you click the eye icons to make the top layers disappear. You can see the layers beneath, but you can't see all three. So you're going to select each layer one at a time, go up to where it says Mode Normal, click the little down arrow to open the drop-down menu, and then select Screen. And you're going to do this for each layer. And that makes the layers somewhat transparent, so you can actually see all three at once. Now, the next thing you're going to do is where you actually get into the fun part of adjusting the image, is turn two of the layers off. You can decide which one you want to work with. I'm going to turn the top two layers off and select the bottom layers. Now, that's the only one I can see. Remember, you turn layers on and off by clicking the little eye icon next to them. And now I'm going to go up to Colors, Levels. And this brings up the level adjustment tool that you can use to adjust the brightness and darkness of different regions of the image. So what this shows is a histogram of the number of pixels at a certain brightness in the image. So you can toggle between a linear histogram and a logarithmic histogram. Usually with these images, the logarithmic one is going to make it easier to see. So basically, what this image is saying is that there are very many dark pixels and then fewer and fewer bright pixels as you see the y-axis of this graph go down as I trail off to the right. And that makes sense. If I look at the image here, there are a lot of dark pixels and very few bright pixels. And you can adjust how these pixels look by clicking on this little middle triangle on the slider bar and dragging it back and forth. So you can see that on one extreme, if I drag it all the way to the right, the whole image becomes completely dark. If I drag it all the way to the left, the image gets very bright and noisy. So you probably want to be, and then if you can't forget, remember where it was to begin with, you can hit reset channel, and it'll bring it back to the middle. Now, what you might have noticed as I was dragging that back and forth is that these two bars next to, here, next to each other here, the top one is changing colors. So initially, they look the same, but as I move this slider bar, you can see the top one changes. So what I'm, these two bars are showing is how the value of an input pixel is mapped to the value of an output display. So initially, say if I move this slider over to the left, the pixels that are very dark will then become somewhat lighter. So even though they were initially too dark for us to see, by moving this slider you can force the screen to display them a little brighter and bring out some detail in the image. But if you go too far, then you're making even the very dark pixels very bright and you can ruin the image. So you can drag this back and forth until you find a comfortable value where you think the image isn't too grainy, but you can also see a nice amount of the detail. You can also, there are some more settings here you can play with, some additional triangles you can drag around, but for starters, you're probably just gonna wanna move this middle one. But you might also, instead of moving the slider on this histogram, try clicking the Edit These Settings as Curves button. And what this does is bring up a graph that's just a different way of displaying the same thing, where on the x-axis here, you have a line representing the input pixel value, and on the y-axis, the output display value. And right now, this is just a straight line, so a white pixel will look white, a black pixel will look black, and then 
each grayscale value maps to an equal grayscale value. But you can click on this curve and drag it and get the same effect that you would have gotten by moving that little slider around on the previous window. So you can could do all sorts of funky things and add different points to this curve to move it in different directions. And then of course if it gets confusing you can always just hit reset and bring it back to the initial shape. So I'm going to cancel out of that and just go back in to levels and just adjust this middle slider a little bit to help bring out some of the brightness in that image without making it too grainy. So I think I'm good about there. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn that layer off, go to my middle layer, again go to colors, levels, adjust this slider a little bit. You know, I don't want to go too far. Maybe about right there is a good amount of brightness. And then turn the last layer on, do the same thing, go to colors, levels, and that one gets grainy kind of fast, so I want to find a nice balance, maybe about there. Okay, and now if I turn all three layers back on, you can see this is much brighter than my original image, but it's still kind of grainy. So the next thing you'll want to do is apply a smoothing algorithm to help get rid of some of these grainy pixels. So again, you're going to turn layers off and do this one layer at a time. Make sure you have the layer you want to work with selected. Now you're going to go up to Filters, all the way to the bottom, GMIC. This is an add-on package that you installed. You have to follow the directions on the Chandra website to do this. Click on that. And this brings up a list of a lot of different filters, way more than you're going to want to tinker with to begin with. Instead, just navigate down to where it says Repair, and then click on smooth anisotropic. So this filter has a bunch of different settings. You're not going to need to tinker with these at first, but you certainly can in the long run see what changing them does. But you can just use the default settings for the first time. And if you go over here in the preview window, notice there's a little preview checkbox I can click. And you, this might be kind of hard to see in the video, but you should be able to see it on your own computer screen. When I preview the filter, the image gets a little less grainy and looks smoother. So I'm just going to let it go ahead and use the default settings and hit apply. This can take a second. You see this green bar bouncing back and forth on the bottom of the screen. It's taking time to do a lot of calculations to actually perform that on the image layer. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to do the same thing to my other two layers. I'm going to select the middle layer, go to Filters, GMIC. It's already navigated down to that smooth anisotropic filter. I'm just going to hit Apply again. Give it a second to apply the filter as the bar bounces back and forth. And then when it's done, I'll hit OK. And do that to the final layer. So again, filters, GMIC. I'm going to check the preview here. It's a little more obvious on this one. You can see when I click that button, it gets grainy. If you're not watching this video full screen in YouTube, that might make it easier to see the difference as I toggle back and forth there. So again, hit apply. wait for it to finish, and hit OK. So now this image should be a little less grainy than what I had before I ran that filter. Again, you can run the filter more than once, or you can tweak the settings on the filter to change the smoothness you get out of running that filter. Now, finally, the really fun part is adding color to the image. So again, I'm going to turn two layers off, go down to my lowest layer, to Colors, and select Colorize. And this brings up a window with three different slider bars, hue, saturation, and lightness. So in colloquial terms, um, hue is what's actually going to change the color. So you can see as I slide this around, I get different shades of red, green, blue, magenta, kind of a cyan. So the tradition with these photos is usually to use red for the lower energy x-rays, so since it's at the lowest energy band corresponding to the lowest layer. I'm going to move this all the way to the left to get red. And then you can adjust the saturation and lightness values. So again, I'll just show you what this does, moving it all the way from one end to the other. You can see moving it all the way to the right gives you a very rich saturated red. 
all the way to the left makes it completely gray. So I'm going to go for, you know, I'd like a nice vibrant red, move it over to the right a little bit. And then lightness affects the lightness of the entire image, not just the red part. So if I go all the way to the left, it becomes black. If I go all the way to the right, it becomes white. I kind of want to, you know, leave the background spaces black and not have it appear red. So I'm actually going to move the lightness over to the left a little bit. And again, you can tinker with the saturation to get the shade you need. Okay, and now I'm going to go do the same thing to the middle and high layers using green and blue respectively. So I'm going to click on the middle layer, go up to colors, colorize. I want to get a nice green with this one. So that's a little bit to the left, the center. There's a nice bright green. Maybe add a little saturation. And again, I'm going to drop the lightness a little bit just so it doesn't get too bright and overwhelm everything else. Finally, I'm going to do the same thing to the top layer by turning it on, clicking on it, going up to colors, colorize, and I'd like to have a nice kind of deep royal blue for this one. So I'm going to drag these bars around until I get what I'm looking for. There we go. And now I should be able to turn all three layers on, and you get this cool colorized image where the different colors correspond to different levels of X-ray energy. So blue represents High energy x-rays, green represents medium energy x-rays, and red represents low energy x-rays. And now we have it in a colorized image that makes sense to the human eye, whereas initially we just had grayscale x-ray data that was recorded by the camera, uh, camera equipment in the telescope. But of course, humans can't see x-rays, so now we've converted the data into something that makes sense to us, just visually. So in this project, you're going to pick your own images from the NASA website and work through this process yourself.